The sight of this might bring back old memories, maybe unpleasant memories. You may have spent a number of hours looking for a problem and then after perhaps a fair amount of time and perhaps even some money, this was the little guy at the end of the trail. Or your memories might be positive. You might have reason to believe correctly that this saved your life. What is this? This is a 900-240. It's an aftermarket inertia switch. What does it do? Well, imagine you're driving along, your motor's warmed up, everything is going just the way it should, and instantaneously, without even knowing it, bang, there's a crash. It happens. It happens every day. You're hurt. You're not too badly hurt. Mostly you're just shocked senseless for a few moments. However, in the crash, a number of things in your engine bay were damaged. Lines were twisted and ruptured. Cables were twisted and torn. Many of our classic British cars and virtually all modern cars use electric fuel pumps. One of the worst case scenarios that can involve an electric fuel pump is where there's an accident. A fuel line under the hood is ruptured. The driver is incapacitated. The key is still on. A fire starts in the engine bay. The electric fuel pump goes right on pumping, pumping, pumping fuel into the fire. And the results? Well, we don't have to discuss the results. The solution for some of our latter classic British cars and virtually all modern cars is a switch that turns off the power to the fuel pump if there's an accident. That's a great idea. We think about classic British cars with a factory equipped switch like this. Well, the first cars that come to mind will be the late MGB and perhaps the late MG Midget. Most of the earlier cars with electric fuel pumps had no such safety feature. However, a switch like this can be retrofitted in virtually any car with an electric fuel pump. So how does it work? How do we do that? Well, you can see there are two mounting points. That's very easy. We're just going to simply connect it to something which is a solid part of the car. It comes with a plug that goes in the bottom with two leads. Normally, you're going to have a lead running from your ignition switch straight to your fuel pump so that when you turn your switch on, the pump has power. Now what we're going to do is we'll have the lead run from the switch to one side of this and out the other side of this, the lead going off to the fuel pump itself. When it's installed, you simply push the button on the top, listen to the noise. There you hear it. Right now it has closed the contacts. If I turn my key on, my fuel pump will have power. If I turn my key off, it won't. Now, if the car is, is facing an accident, there's some sort of a bump, what will happen is this will sense it, and when it does, it opens the switch. Listen to it as it does its job. Ready? Hear that? That's the sound it makes when it is just released. What it has done is it has shut off the power to the fuel pump. Now, what's it like to live with a switch like this in your car? Well, for one thing, sometimes diagnosing what happened when your inertia switch has done its job can be a challenge. Imagine you're in bumper to bumper traffic and the guy behind you gives you an inadvertent little bump. It's happened to all of us. You get out, you take a look at your car, you look at his car and you say, you know, nothing's wrong. You know, go about your day and you both get in your cars and go on your way. There's no real damage. The bump may have set off the inertia switch. The switch has cut off the power to your fuel pump. However, your vision is clouded by the fact that your two carburetors have fuel in them. So even though the fuel supply is cut off, you're going to be able to drive this car for a couple minutes on the reserve that's inside the carburetors. Then when your engine stops and you coast to the side of the road, the link between that bump and the sudden stopping of your engine, well, it might get lost. You might not link the two of them together. Same thing too can happen if you hit a serious pothole or run over a curb, any kind of a serious jolt like that, and the switch can think there's been an accident and turn your fuel off. Another thing is you might forget you have an inertia switch. Perhaps after a few moments of trying to get your car started, you notice the ubiquitous thump, 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 thump from your fuel pump has been silenced. And you might think, must be a bad pump. It would be a shame to tow the car all the way home and install a new fuel pump only to find out that that wasn't the problem. Whenever a pump is suspected of being in trouble, check the electric supply. If there's no electricity going to the pump, the pump can't work. If your electric supply suddenly goes out and your car is equipped with an inertia switch, factory or aftermarket, check the inertia switch. All you have to do to reset it is just simply push the button down on the top and she's done. Unfortunately, some people have found they have no power to their fuel pump. They fall the wires and finally come to the inertia switch. They say, wow, power goes in, but power doesn't come out. In frustration, the owner might simply bypass the switch. Now, whenever he turns the key on, power goes to the pump, and that's what he wants. If your car has an inertia switch, it'll be in the wiring diagram. 
why not take a minute to learn where it is? For example, if you've got a left-hand drive late model MG, MGB, it's going to be by the driver's left knee. Then you can re easily reset it if you have to. In fact, if you don't hear your fuel pump running at any time, why not just reach in and push the button? It's easy to do and it's one less thing to be concerned about. If your car used to have an inertia switch for turning off the fuel and it's been removed or bypassed, remember, this is a safety feature. Sure, it can occasionally cause a headache if your car has been subject to a firm bump, but if circumstances arise when you need what a 900-240 can do, it will be indispensable. And lastly, if your car was not built with one of these, but it's equipped with an electric fuel pump, think about putting an aftermarket switch like this in your car. They're inexpensive. They are not polarity sensitive, and you can tuck it away someplace where it won't be noticed. Then, like insurance, if you need it, you'll be grateful you have it.